<laughs> It's official. Super Saiyan 3. What can I say about this form? From the moment it was introduced, it was a highly controversial addition to the Dragon Ball mythos. People either love it and think it's underutilized, or they hate it and think it should never have existed at all. If you've seen the title of the video, you know that I stand firmly in the corner of the former. Super Saiyan 3 is one of my all-time favorite forms. Its appearance and its introduction were absolutely flawless in my opinion, and it left a permanent impression on me I don't think I'll ever be able to fully divorce from my opinion of the form. But don't get the wrong idea, my love for this form isn't entirely rooted in bias, and frankly, I think Super Saiyan 3 is overhated. In this video, I'd like to make a case for why I think Super Saiyan 3 is perfectly fine for what it is, and is certainly much more valid than the unending adoration given to other concepts in Dragon Ball, like fusions. So first, let's briefly cover what this form actually is. Super Saiyan 3 is the final transformation in the Super Saiyan catalog that can be obtained purely through physical and key training. It draws out the power of the user to its utmost limits and thus requires a strenuous amount of effort to activate, requiring the user to pour out every last bit of energy from every Every cell in their body until it bursts in an eruption of raw primal energy. Successfully accomplishing this will lead one to become a Super Saiyan 3, but drawing out such massive amounts of power comes with many drawbacks. The form quickly drains one's ki and stamina, leaving the user completely exhausted even long after the form has dissipated. These drawbacks ultimately lead it to being pretty much unusable in most combat situations situations, and in fact, may very well be unobtainable under normal conditions. Goku only managed to unlock this form because he was training in Otherworld and didn't have to worry about overexerting his body to the point it would kill him. When he used the form against Majin Buu, it was the first time he had used the form in a living body, and it drained him more than he expected it to. In addition, it cut drastically into the amount of time that he could spend on Earth, as he had been given a day, and it's confirmed that activating the form cut that time roughly in half. Further, Gotenks could only use the form due to being a fusion of Goten and Trunks, and having already seen Goku do it, essentially giving him a guide on how to achieve the form himself. Now that you know what Super Saiyan 3 is, I want to address some of the criticisms levied against it. Reasons why it's quote-unquote not a good form. One argument against Super Saiyan 3 that I've seen a lot is that it never gets any wins. Therefore, it's a bad form. Well, with the amount of glazing fusion characters get, it might come as a surprise that in canon, no fusion has ever actually won their fights either. At least not until Dragon Dragon Ball Super Broly, which I consider a mark against that movie as it demonstrates a lack of understanding of the internal philosophy of Dragon Ball, but it's more excusable here seeing as Broly wasn't actually a villain that needed to be defeated and had just lost control of himself and needed to be beat back to sanity. Yes, Vegito accomplished his goal when Buu ate him, but that doesn't mean he won the fight. Fusion characters have always been a plot device utilized to progress things from point A to point B, not Deus Machina's intended to end the plot with an ass pole, unlike in the Fusion Reborn movie and the aforementioned Dragon Ball Super Broly. So if fusions never catch any wins, and neither does Super Saiyan 3, why does one get glazed to high heaven when it actively takes away the nuance of whatever scenario it's introduced in by replacing the important characters with an inherently less interesting one, but Super Saiyan 3, which grants a massive power boost, but maintains the stakes with its intense draw backs gets all the hate levied against it. Sounds like favoritism to me. So that's the first argument. Let's move on to the next one. Super Saiyan 3's existence ruins the plot. In essence, 
This argument boils down to the idea that Goku was this infinite IQ character once Babidi was introduced into the story, working to the best of his ability to end the threat to Earth, and that the revelation of Super Saiyan 3's existence destroys this characterization by turning Goku into a massive dumbass by not A, using the form to one-tap Majin Vegeta and move on to help Gohan and Supreme Kai finish off Babidi and Debora, or B, powering up to Super Saiyan 3 and wiping out Majin Buu now as he stays later he was fully capable of doing during the Kid Buu fight. This argument hinges on the idea that Goku was doing everything in his power to stop Babidi from resurrecting Buu, and that by introducing Super Saiyan 3 later in the story, it retroactively paints Goku in a much more negative light. The problem is Goku was already doing things that would, in theory, go against the idea of stopping Babidi as quickly and efficiently as possible. Letting Spobovich beat the absolute snot out of Adele, and letting him absorb Gohan's energy to bring back to Boo. Now, of course, you can argue the Supreme Kai stopped them and explicitly told them not to interfere, since the plan was to follow Spobovich back to Babidi's ship, but if you can ask why Goku didn't just power up to Super Saiyan 3 against Majin Vegeta, I can ask why Goku didn't immediately kill Deborah when he easily could have after turning Krillin and Piccolo to stone, or why they even bothered taking turns fighting Babidi's minions if the goal was to win and stop Boo's resurrection no matter what, or why Goku didn't interfere with with Gohan and Deborah's fight once they realized it was a losing battle. They had a hundred opportunities and a hundred more before Super Saiyan 3 ever entered the equation to end the conflict before it ever started. And that's the point. The Boo Saga is all about the characters and their flaws which lead to the escalation of an easily avoidable conflict until it gets to the point that they have no choice but to handle it themselves. Goku has never been the sort of person to end a fight early. And it's it's not like he had much of a choice either. Yes, using Super Saiyan 3 to quickly take out Vegeta might have been an option, but there's a lot of unknowns that rise as a result of that. First off, using the form immediately cuts the amount of time he has left on Earth in half at least. Second, it would leave him physically drained and exhausted, even if he switched back relatively quickly, but there's no guarantee for that either. Kid Buu was roughly around the level of Super Saiyan 3 Goku, but that didn't stop Vegeta from taking an absolute beat down from him and still getting back up for more. There's no guarantee that Goku could fold Vegeta before he either ran out of strength or was forced to leave and go back to Otherworld. And again, does anyone really think Goku wouldn't give himself the best fight possible regardless of the circumstance? Especially after everything Vegeta said to him. In Goku's mind, it would have been an insult not to give him the fight he craved. He didn't hold back Super Saiyan 3 to protect Vegeta's ego. He did it because there was no guarantee using it would have solved the problem, even if he was able to defeat Vegeta before he ran out of power. It was the safer bet to use Super Saiyan 2. It also helps that nobody thought Boo would be as powerful as he ended up being. They were shown constantly that Babidi's minions were much weaker than the Supreme Kai painted them to be. So I imagine, in Goku and Vegeta's mind, even if the worst did happen, there was nothing to worry about. Adding on to this, Goku's character has been consumed with the idea of trying to foster the next generation to protect the Earth now that he's gone. He tried to set up Gohan to inherit that role, but it didn't work out and Goku realized it during the battle with Deborah. So naturally, he started looking for the next best fit to inherit the role of Earth's protector. Vegeta was dead too, so he naturally looked to the kids, who had already demonstrated considerable growth in power without even really trying. Goku didn't want to defeat Majin Buu when he could have, because he was trying to assure himself that the world would be okay without him. And in his mind, the only way to do that was to put the people still alive to the test. And that meant the kids. It's not character assassination for Goku to do any of this, and it further plays into the themes of the Buu Saga again, wherein the character's flaws are what perpetuate and escalate the conflict to the level it ends up getting to. Does it paint Goku as reckless and irresponsible? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, and that's the point. That was one of his greatest flaws around this time, and it led to Gohan nearly getting killed against Cell as well. However, 
in the case of Goku and Gohan, I give him a bit more credit here than I do with him trying to groom Goten and Trunks into being the Earth's protectors, because Gohan, in that instance, was the last resort. Goku states that he was fighting Cell with everything he had, meaning he was trying to get the win in this instance, unlike with Boo, where he purposefully held back when he could have won. Argument number three, and this is the one I see the most, which is funny because it's the easiest one to rebuke, that being being that Super Saiyan 3 was an unearned power-up, therefore, it's bad. This one is just stupid, because you can say the same thing for everything the characters gained post-time skip. You can use the exact same argument for Goku and Vegeta getting Super Saiyan 2, or even Vegeta unlocking Super Saiyan Grade 2 in the Cell Saga, since while we're told he trained for a year in the time chamber, we barely saw any of the actual training he went through to get the form outside of flashbacks or word of mouth. What's the difference with this and that? Is it that Super Saiyan Grade 2 ended up being unable to defeat the villain? Well, Super Saiyan 3 didn't either. Plus, this was still during the time Goku had been replaced as the main character. I don't think he really became the primary character of the series again until around the time he came back to Earth to fight Super Boo. So having an off-screen power-up for someone who at the time wasn't the main character, and also not having that unearned power-up get the win, even after he returned to the main character role seems perfectly reasonable to me. Finally, argument number four. Super Saiyan 3 is just as bad as Super Saiyan Grade 3. This one, as far as I'm concerned, is complete nonsense. The problem with Super Saiyan Grade 3 is that the negatives outweighed the positives and made the form completely unreliable for combat. On the surface, the same could be true for Super Saiyan 3, but I think the differences are so obvious this shouldn't even be a debate. Super Saiyan Grade 3 completely sacrifices speed and mobility for raw strength. Super Saiyan 3, on the other hand, enhances strength and mobility and speed. It draws out all attributes of its user to the limit for an explosive burst of power. It wears out quickly, but it's perfect for quickly and efficiently annihilating an opponent in one fell swoop. But in terms of the narrative, it didn't need to do anything substantial because of the previously mentioned fact that the power-up was off-screened. If it had been the clutch up for ending the arc, it wouldn't have been nearly as good and impactful as the Boo Saga ended up being, and it would have gone against Dragon Ball's internal philosophy of success through struggle. Goku was only able to acquire the form because he was dead, so the form was unearned because Goku didn't have to overcome the limits of his body in order to sustain it. He got it when that wasn't an issue, and then already having that experience allowed him to make use of the form when he did eventually get resurrected, but because he was inexperienced with the form in a living body, he ran out of energy, and nearly failed to finish off Kid Buu because of it. So I definitely don't think Super Saiyan 3 is nearly as bad as Grade 3, as it actually does have its uses, whereas Grade 3 is absolutely worthless regardless of the situation, which was the point of its existence. I will say that Dragon Ball Super retroactively makes Super Saiyan 3 much, much worse, since Goku never got past its limitations before acquiring superior forms to make use of. So if anything, Super Saiyan 3 was a much better and more interesting form before Super existed and made it seem pretty much worthless. Which is a shame because it's probably a contender for coolest looking form in the series. I certainly wouldn't blame anyone who told me it was their favorite. It's certainly up there for me and it's a damn shame we'll probably never see it again in the canon thanks to the infinitely visually less interesting god forms. In conclusion, some of the critiques made against Super Saiyan 3 are technically true, but they're not really critiques and, in my opinion, are born from a misunderstanding of the narrative. There's nothing wrong with Super Saiyan 3 existing in the story, and it certainly doesn't ruin anything, especially thanks to the existence of the drawbacks that come from using it. And even if it didn't really need to exist and doesn't add anything to the story, that's not exactly an issue either, since I don't think it takes anything away. Besides, I would argue it does add something. Without Super Saiyan 3, the dynamic between Goku and Vegeta after being sent back to Earth to fight Boo changes, and we wouldn't get the setup and payoff of the boys wanting to get Super Saiyan 3 themselves, and then later accomplishing that as a fusion. A perfect Chekhov's gun, if you ask me. But that's not even the only one the form sets up, either. The massive energy drain contributes to the story later down the line by setting up the massive drain that forces Goku to go back to the other world sooner than intended, and then paying that off later with Goku 
Goku being unable to recharge his energy because of the intense strain being placed on his living body that he didn't account for, raising the stakes and making his eventual success over Boo that much more satisfying as a result. It didn't need to win any battles to be completely badass, and it doesn't destroy the narrative or derail Goku's character in any meaningful way because the entire premise of the Boo arc was that the characters make awful decisions which lead to the escalation of this event, which they could have easily avoided if they weren't who they are. There's a lot of elements to the Boo arc that can be criticized if you're not looking at it through the lens of characterization. So that's my defense of Super Saiyan 3, a supremely kick-ass form that gets bogged down mostly by the perception from fans of its impact on the narrative and Goku's character. One more quick fact I want to mention is that it has been stated by Toriyama that Super Saiyan 2 and 3 are simply mutations of the original Super Saiyan form, and that one can train and draw out the same levels of power from Super Saiyan that they get from Super Saiyan 2 and 3. So this basically renders both forms meaningless, not just 3. But regardless, it's still a crazy cool and visually appealing transformation that outmatches almost all the others in terms of raw aura and presence. If you want to know which form I think outdoes it, be sure to like the video and subscribe for more content in the future. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you later. <laughs> Outstanding.